Hey Pokemon fans, today I'm going to be doing a very special video, 100 subscribers. Yes! It has been great to have you all. I am super glad that you guys decided to subscribe, decided to watch me rant about anime. It has been a pleasure to have you, pleasure to talk to you. It has just been great. So, as requested by a poll, I will be doing a 100 subscriber special, Top 10 Favorite Pokemon. I usually never have really made a list of my top 10 favorite Pokemon before. I once did, and that was back when I was 6. It consisted of Weezing, Arbok, Meowth, Pikachu, right? You get the idea. Anime Pokemon. So anyway, I made a new list, updated for new Pokemon, and up to my new likes. Number 10. Weevil. Yeah, uh, Diamond and Pearl, to be honest, introduced a lot of Pokemon that I really just didn't care for. I mean... They weren't that good, but Weevil was one of the exceptions to that rule. I usually don't like when they introduce new evolutions to a Pokemon, because usually they mess it up, and it kind of ruins the image of the Pokemon I had. But Weevil just turned a Pokemon that I really didn't care for into an amazing revenge killer. It is just so good for so many reasons, and it looks the part too. I mean... It's cold-hearted, it's a cold-hearted dark, it's just, oh man, ice and dark just, it, it, it's so perfect, and then the three claws with three legs, it just, this thing just oozes perfection, it's, oh man, it's just, it, it looks like the perfect revenge killer, it's typing gives it the perfect revenge killer look. It just looks and acts so much like a revenge killer. Even its Pokédex entry about scratching messages in the trees. It's so revenge and in the shadows, cloak and dagger-ish. That is probably why I love it. And that is probably why it's the only Diamond, Pearl, Platinum Pokémon introduced that was an evolution of a prior one that I like. And I actually think it improved on Sneasel's design. So that is why I got number 10 on this list. Number 9. Another evolution, redemption, and looks do not deceive story, Gyarados gets a place on this list, mainly because, again, it just does not deceive you when you look at it. This thing is amazing, and it was a boss in Generation 1 when I used it. I mean, I got a Magikarp, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to train this up because I spent 500 Poke on it. And when you blow 500 Poke on it, that's a lot of money. So I raised it up hoping upon hopes that it would become great, it would get some secret move that would make it awesome, not really realizing what stats were back then, actually. But then when it turned into a Gyarados, I was like, yes! It was just the moment when your Magikarp turns into a Gyarados and you had no idea this was going to happen is just amazing. Eh, yeah, I love it for all those reasons. I mean, it took a, quite a hit when it lost its a lot of special attack, but I still love it, and then I've always thought of it as just shooting hyper beams out, like bam, bam, bam. It has just always been my favorite for those reasons. It just I just remember it as a boss. It looks like a boss too, and I just always think Gyarados used hyper beam, and boom, competition swept away. And plus... It gives you a reason to love Magikarp, one of the most unloved Pokemon otherwise. So that's why I like Gyarados. Number 8. The longest time as a kid, I always used to like sharks. I also liked dragons. And then to combine them together, give them a ground typing, that was just, that was just boom. I loved it immediately. Gyarados just combined two of my favorite animals at the time. Also, ground type was one of my favorite types. So when I first got introduced to Garchomp, I loved it. And then the first deck I bought in black and white was the Dragon Speed deck that featured Garchomp. I just learned to love this thing for so many reasons. The first Mega Evolution I used, Mega Garchomp. This thing just, wow, it just exudes power to me. Every time I've used it in a situation, it had always done great. Except for maybe the competitive battling when we learned how to counter it. And, you know, this was before Fairy was really popular to use in the competitive battling that I used it. Then Fairy started appearing more and I stopped using it, of course. But anyway, when I did use it, it was love. I just, for every reason you could possibly think of, 
Garchomp was there for me. It was the go-to Pokemon, and plus, the design isn't something I necessarily fall for, but just my memories of Garchomp as being so powerful, I never achieved it in the games, mainly because I wasn't looking, really. I didn't know that Gibble evolved into Garchomp, but I loved it. Just, just whenever I used it, I loved it. So that is why I like Garchomp. Number 7. Mega Swampert, and more specifically the whole Mudkip family as a whole, I just think was an amazing starter idea. I mean, whoever did that at Game Freak was an amazing genius. Just the idea of a water ground starter was amazing. I, I just, wow, just doing that alone gave it competitive edge. And it's just, it's, it's even like its design just suggests the power that it has as like this bulky physical, you know, bulky physical sweeper. It's amazing. And then as it gets bigger, it looks, looks more, more, and more the part. It's just, it's, it's so good. And then the design, I just love it. Like Mudkip's like so cute. Marshdomp just kind of has that go lucky middle stage look. And then Swampert looks huge but then this just adds it all because it's like super burly it kind of looks go lucky if you gave it a smile and plus it's cute too i know you might think it's not cute but i think it looks pretty cute i mean you have come on admit it guys it, it looks pretty cute and then man it is my favorite mega evolution by far mega swampert you go yeah i there's nothing else i can really say i mean look at that thing it is a powerhouse, and it just really is the crowning achievement for an awesome evolutionary line with awesome designs. Because I have to say, other than that, I don't really like Hoenn Pokemon or their Mega Evolutions. Like, I just either think they're, like, super overpowered powerhouses, like, cock off, Mega Raquanza, cock off, Mega Blaziken, and otherwise, they're just kind of ones I don't really like. They're just, they're just not my thing. Number six. Easily my favorite of all the starters is Bulbasaur. I mean, look at that thing. It's just so cute. I mean, even the even the Pokemon creators have said it's probably the best Pokemon design they made back in Gen 1. I mean, it just embodies the idea of Pokemon. It's like a dinosaur with a plant. And yeah, it's just it's just so Pokemon-ish. It's it's oh, it's just so good. And then it does so great at the game. I mean, Everything about, like, the grass-type starter was almost designed for the game, almost. I mean, it completely sweeps the first two gyms, and then it doesn't do badly until you get to, like, Fire Psychic. But then after that, it's good again, because it takes out Giovanni, and it's not like it's the worst option for Surge and, you know, Arika. Plus Koga. I mean... They can't really do much to you, you can't do much to them, it's it's a mutual thing. I mean, this is probably the first Pokemon I've put on this list just because I really like its looks though. Competitively wise, I don't really like to use it. I mean, Thick Fat Mega Venusaur is an interesting use, but again, not really my favorite as far as that goes. I just really like Bulbasaur because I love it. Every time I play, you know, the Pokemon games, Pokemon Red or Blue, or I play Fire Red Leaf Green... I always choose Bulbasaur, because Bulbasaur is just my favorite starter. I tried Charmander, I tried Squirtle, and I just I, I just really didn't even like them that much. At all. I mean, I first chose Charmander because I played Pokemon Red, but I, I didn't like it. So I restarted, I chose Bulbasaur, and I, I loved it. Just played through the entire game, and plus it didn't seem like it had that much love, since in the US it didn't have its own game. But yeah, that's why I like Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is just my fave. Not my favorite favorite, but you get the idea. Number five, Fire Psychic Starter. Two of my favorite types. Fire is not my favorite favorite type, but it's my favorite of the starter types, combined with Psychic, my favorite type overall. And we get a Pokemon that's pretty much guaranteed a list in my top five. Number four, Butterfree. Okay. So, if you haven't noticed by now, I really like Pokemon that just tend to be hated upon a lot. And that I think deserve a lot of undeserved bad attention. 
Because Butterfree, I think, if you use it in the proper environment, is amazing. With its sleep powder that's 97.5% accurate, wow. Plus its psychic moves, I mean, come on, you get those on early in the game. And besides, it learns psychic too. Why wouldn't you love Butterfree? It has always been the thing I've craved for when I'm doing my Nuzlocke. I'm like, come on, please let it be a Caterpie. And then when I get a Caterpie, there's the elation of just catching that Caterpie and being like, yes, I now have a Psychic type. It just has so many reasons. It has found love for me. I just love Butterfree. I don't care that it has five weaknesses, three of which are three times weaknesses. It is just something I love. I love Butterfree. Okay, two two times weakness, but still, I love it. It is an amazing Psychic Butterfly. There is no reason I would not love the Sleep Powder Psychic. It's just, don't care what the other two moves are. It is amazing. Okay, maybe Bug Buzz and Quiver Dance. Yeah. Point is, it's just, it's an awesome Psychic Butterfly. Number three. Probably the only fairy type I've ever liked. Clef Key is just love. I love it for so many reasons. It is just, oh, just so great at what it does it's just it just looks like a little peeve and that's what it is i mean come on how many of us lose our keys all the time and boom we have a little prankster who has key rings i mean we know who's been stealing our keys now klefki it is just it is the only fairy type i have ever liked and it just it's powerful it's cute and it's just such a great design i mean i know people are like it's just a ring of keys but when you think about it I mean, that's just, it's, it's, it's the simplicity of it that I like. And to think that it's like super small too is just, I just love the idea to see your, your clef key just completely like mauling somebody or like, you know, being such a pain in the neck. And it's just like, <laughs> just this little tiny thing with your keys. And it's like, yes, I just, just love it. Just love it, love it, love it. That is why I like clef key number three. Number two. Well, 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 guess who didn't make number one? Wobbuffet. I mean, I've always really liked it, and personally, I still do love it a lot, but when it came down to it, it was very, very close, and I had to decide, you know what? Wobbuffet, you're number two. Am I still going to keep him as my mascot? Yes, but Wobbuffet, I love it. It is just, it is so amazing. It can one-shot anything in Ubers if you use it correctly. It was banned for three generations because of the Perpetual Battle Clause. Just Wobbuffet just is just such a great thing in my mind. And then I love the theory about its tail. That has really fueled my Pokeball theory. There are so many reasons for me to love Wobbuffet for adding theory fodder to being a great one-shotter troll. Wobbuffet is just amazing. There are so many reasons, so, so many reasons to like Wobbuffet. And, yeah, basically, I just like Wobbuffet because it's a troll. It's, it's, it's a one-shotting troll. It's a troll with a punch. That is like I like Wobbuffet. And plus it's psychic type. And if you're psychic, you're pretty much going to be in my top 100. Pretty much. Unless, of course, you fall out the bottom of it. Honorable mentions, just would like to give a quick shout out to all the Pokemon that I like, despite the fact that they're not usually liked normally. I like all the birds and stuff that you get in the beginning, like Noctowl, for instance, is probably my favorite of them for the birds, and then Raticate for the rodents. I like these mainly because, I don't know, they're just, I just really like them because they're so underloved, and probably because I've done so many Nuzlocke, I've learned to love them all through personal trials and experience. They always seem to stick around, mainly because you don't use them a lot, but they just they just stick around a lot. There's so many reasons to love them, especially, for instance, Jenny, the bro. I just love them all. I like all the derpy rodents, except for maybe Watchdog. Number one! Mewtwo. I just love this thing, mainly because it's psychic and it's awesome. Point and case. I don't even care for his Mega Evolutions. It's already awesome. It didn't need Mega Evolutions. With 680 base stat, that thing is a boss already. I mean, heck, that's practically as good as some Mega Legendaries already. I mean, this thing is Game Freak's monster. It is just wow. And the theories behind it, too, are so cool. 
They're just, oh man, it's just, it's just great. Mewtwo, you're a psychic, you're boss, and you look cool. You didn't even need Megas. And then Mega Mewtwo Y, that is just perfection right there. All the reasons to love Mewtwo are just huge, huge reasons to love Mewtwo. And then additionally, it's probably my only favorite that hasn't changed over the years, along with Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet and Mewtwo are the two um, favorites that have always kind of stayed in the top five-ish. And then as others have fallen in and out with me, they've kind of risen to the top. Why has Mewtwo gotten the top spot? Mainly because, I don't know, it just, it deserves it. it it's something you have to master ball. To put Mewtwo lower would seem like thing. I like it a lot just because of just how awesome it is. It is the best Pokemon in my instance, and it probably is the coolest design of any Pokemon that I've seen that's not over-designed. So there you have it, my top 10 favorite Pokemon. Yeah, it's been a while. I should have released this video a little earlier, but these are my top 10 favorites. Uh, will they change in the near future? I don't know. Sun and Moon's coming out soon, so I might update that if I get a thousand subscribers sometime around then, if this list has significantly changed. But who knows what the future holds. Anyway, I would just like to say thank you for watching, thank you for caring about my opinions, and please subscribe, leave a like, and a comment. Goodbye!